So today we're going to be learning about how we can aggregate candlesticks into different time frames in Python using pandas. So let's say you had the one minute candle data, open, high, low, close data, and you wanted to aggregate that into three minute candles for some visualization or perhaps some kind of back testing. How would you go about doing that in Python? That's what we're going to be learning about today. And I'm also going to show you how you can aggregate tick data into open, high, low, close data of any format that you choose. Tick data being the actual trades that are going on. So if you've got a list of trades that happened over a certain period, how you can convert that into any length of candlestick that you want. And this is useful because generally, if you have, say, a WebSocket connection to something like Binance or any other crypto exchange, you'll typically receive data tick by tick and you'll want to aggregate that in real time into candlestick charts. Now, obviously with a platform like TradingView, if I've got the one minute chart here and I wanna convert that to three minutes, to five minutes, to one hour, very, very easy. In Pandas, it's also relatively easy, but simultaneously kind of obscure. So let's go ahead and dig into that and see what we're doing. So the first thing that you'll need is you'll need some kind of data. Now, if you just want to follow along with the video, I'd recommend going to cryptodatadownload.com here, and you can go to the data, and if you just pick one of the exchanges, there should be data available for one of them. I'm gonna use the one minute data just because there's more one minute data, and it's a much more common use case, rolling up the one minute into say 10 minute or 20 minute or something like that. And then once you've downloaded it, you'll want to open it up. So I've got mine here. And you'll want to get it in roughly this format, whatever date that you have. So the columns I'm going to be using is this column, which is the Unix timestamp. So it's the number of seconds since midnight on the 1st of January, 1970, just how computers measure time. You can pass in this date column if you wanted to using pandas.2 underscore date time. That's certainly a valid way of doing things, just a bit more awkward than using Unix timestamps. And then we've got open, high, low, close, and then volume here. This volume is measured in Bitcoin. So once you've got something that roughly resembles this, we're ready to actually dig into pandas. So let's go ahead and do that here. So we'll open up a pandas file and we'll call it tutorial.py. First thing you obviously want to do is go ahead and import pandas as pd. And then we want to actually load in our data frame. So we'll say df for data frame is equal to pd.read underscore csv. Then we type the name of our csv file in. So if I go into this folder, we can see it's called a minute-data.csv. So it's minute-data.csv. And then one thing I like to do here is to include all of the names of the columns inside these double square brackets here. What that essentially does is it just drops all the columns that we don't want. So anything I don't put in here won't be included in this data frame when we print it out. It also serves as a good reminder of what the columns are called because it's something I often forget while I'm halfway through a program. So let's go have a look at the column headers here. As I mentioned before, I want Unix, open, high, low, close, and volume. So let's go ahead and write those in here. So I want Unix, I want open, high, low, close, and volume. And then close that with the double square brackets. And if we print on out that data frame, there we go. We can see that we've got about half a million rows here. So quite a bit of data. And you'll see just how quick it is to aggregate this later on. But it really is surprisingly quick when you're using pandas to do this. So the first order of business really is to convert this Unix timestamp into a actual date time format. So right now pandas is going to be reading this in as an integer. So if I do df dot d types and I print that out, you can see it's reading that as an integer. And in order to use the aggregation function that we're going to use in a second, this needs to be an actual date format recognized by pandas. 
So it's pretty easy to do that. So we'll just make a new column and we'll call it date. And then we'll set that equal to PD dots to underscore date time. And then you'll want to put in the Unix timestamp here. So we'll grab that column and we'll put that in there. And I think the default setting should be just fine here. So if I do a print DF after that, we'll see what happens. So there we go. Well, we do have a date time column here. One thing to notice is that all these dates are very wrong. Bitcoin wasn't around in 1970. And what's happened here is that it's read the time as if it were in nanoseconds since the 1st of January, 1970. Whereas in our spreadsheet here, it's actually in seconds. Now to fix that, pretty easy. You just provide a parameter over here. So we say unit is equal to seconds. If yours was in milliseconds, you'd give it in milliseconds, you just MS or NS for nanoseconds. That should work there now. So yeah, we've got a relatively reasonable date here. I downloaded the minute data for 2020, so this is looking good. The next thing that you'll want to do is to set this as the index of the data frame. So easiest way to do this is df.set underscore index. Give the name of the column that you want to set as the index. So I'm going to set date as the index and in place is equal to true. And there we go. So you can see it's kind of, it's replaced the integers here. So previously, if you index into this data frame with an integer, that's what you'd get. Now the index is actually the date for each of these entries. In place equals true here, it just makes sure that you don't have to do something like that. Say df is equal to that. Just a different syntax, you can use whatever you're used to normally. So the final step here to actually aggregate things is to call the resample function. So we'll say df is equal to df.resample. And in here you want to put the time frame that you want to resample it to. So my data is in one minute intervals. So let's aggregate it into two minute bars and see what that looks like. Now, there are different short codes and symbols that you can use to represent minutes, hours, days, months, weeks, years. You can look those up on the pandas documentation. Um, generally, two min will obviously mean two minutes. Two T is also the symbol for minutes, so a T. Um, if you use M or capital M like that, you'll get the month. If you want a second, capital S will sort you out. If you want week, I think it's W, but again, there's a full list on the pandas documentation and you can kind of play around with it yourself. I'm just gonna use two minutes, so two T or two min, either will work. And then we want to do the dot ag here. Now, what this will let us do is it will let us select a column and a function that we want to apply to that column. So if you set this up as a dictionary here, the columns that we want to use, so the first one is open here, and what function do we want to apply to open? Well, open is the first element in the candlestick, right? It's the first trade that goes on. So we want to apply first here as a function. If we have high, then we want to apply max, if we have low, then we want to apply a min. And if we want the closing price, then that's the last. And of course, for volume, we want the sum. So if we go ahead and print that on out, you can see we've now got two minute candles as opposed to the one minute candles here. So you can even check this by say, looking at the closing price here. So 28,992, that should be the same as the closing price for this one here. And so this opening price should be the same as this opening price, which is, and the volume should be the sum of these two, which it looks about right. So just to go over that again, I know I went over this bit quite quickly, is, so you select a column, and then what Pandas is doing here under the hood is that it's going through in two minute chunks of time. Any of these rows that fit within those two minute chunks of time, it 
aggregates together in a little group. Then what it does is it applies these functions on each of the columns. So for the open column, so there'll be two elements, right? Because we have one minute candles and we're splitting them into two minute buckets. So for the first one, it will apply first on the open column. So it'll, it'll get the first open. And then for the max, it will get the highest of the two values, whichever one's highest. Low, it'll get the minimum. Close, it'll get the last. Volume, it will add them both together. Same logic applies if you had, say, 10 here, 10 minutes. So you'll have 10 bars. Open, it will grab the first open that appears chronologically. High, it will get the highest out of all the high values, so on and so forth. You can obviously have fun with this. Aggregate this to one hour, let's say. And works pretty quickly, as you saw there, was maybe a second for it to calculate 500,000 bars aggregating into one hour chunks. So really doesn't take that long. And so you can use this in some kind of backtesting project. Maybe you want to do some visualization with candlesticks, Renko charts, anything else I've covered on the channel before. This is really helpful for that kind of thing. Now, the final thing I'm gonna show you in this video is how we can aggregate some raw trades directly into candlesticks and then into whatever type of candlestick we want. We want one minute candlesticks, 10 minute candlesticks, whatever you want. Obviously the problem with candlestick charts is that you lose a lot of the data. So if you want to do something fancy, you know, if I wanted to aggregate this down to one second, I mean, pandas might do it for me, but it's not gonna be very effective because you're gonna end up with lots of missing data here. Whereas if you've got raw trade data, you can do that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and load that in rather than our minute data here. So I'm just gonna overwrite what we've got here. Or I'll comment out what we've got so far and I'll write below. So I'll copy and paste this line. I'll actually, just copy and paste most of this stuff because we're gonna be reusing it. So read CSV. Uh, it's going to be called trades.csv. And well, what columns do we have in here? We've got T for timestamp, price, and V for volume. So T, price, and volume, V for volume. And then we can delete the rest of this stuff. Let's see what happens when we print that out. Unix key error because I'm taking the wrong column here. So you want to take T instead of Unix. So you can see we've got an error here, a date timer. Basically what's happened here is that this is in milliseconds. It's trying to use seconds and it's got some kind of integer overflow error. So the numbers just got too big. If I type in milliseconds here, that should work perfectly. So what we've got here is just a straight up table of some fake data that I made. So this is all just fake Bitcoin trade data. So each one of these is a theoretical trade that went through in Bitcoin. The price, the timestamp that occurred and the volume. You can get this kind of data from any exchange that you want. You can get from Binance, from Coinbase. Lots of them have WebSocket connections where you'll get this stream to you live and then it's up to you to aggregate that information. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. Now, once we've got this in a nice table, there's a very easy function with which we can aggregate this. So we've already done all the preparation. We did that for the last section where we create a date column, we give the correct units, we then set the index of the date. And all we have to do now is use the resample function. So DF, well, let's set DF2 here because we're going to have to do something special for the volume. So data frame 2 is equal to df.resample. So we're actually using the same function we used over here, but this on the end is going to be different. We're not going to use .ag, we're going to use different function. So we can make this whatever we want. I could make this into one minute candles, let's say. Then I'm going to apply dot open high low close here. Now we actually want to select the price column here, otherwise things will go wrong. So 
you're selecting a series here rather than the entire data frame. And you'll see why I created this second data frame over here. So if I print out DF2, we get all of this stuff, but we get date, open high, low close, which is pretty much exactly what we wanted. And we get them in one minute intervals here. So it's aggregated all of those trades, like most of these took part a maybe 100 milliseconds from each other. So it's aggregated up maybe 10, 20 trades in each of these candles very quickly. Now you'll notice that we're missing volume here. Obviously this function here is called open high or low close. It's obviously not including the volume. In order to add the volume in, one thing which you can do is you can just set DF2 here. So we'll create a new column called volume and we'll just set that equal to df volume dot resample use the same time frame obviously so one t and then dot sum so the thing that goes on the end of resample here is just the aggregation function which you apply to that particular element or in our case it was a full dictionary of aggregation functions here so if i print that one out we now have a volume column and obviously that volume column's a little bit high here measured in Bitcoin, but again, this is fake trade data, so it doesn't matter too much. If you want to save down any of this aggregated data to a CSV for just easier retrieval later on, very easy to do that in Pandas. So you just select the name of the data frame that you want to save down. So say df2.2 underscore CSV, give the name of the CSV that you want to save it down to. So I'm going to call mine like save down dot CSV. So you can run that and if I go and open that up here, save down.csv, we can see that opened very nicely here. There are some options to not include the index if you wanted to and to not include the headers, but you can look those up yourself.